Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Welcome to June 2022 on the Heart's Happiness podcast. We are going to be talking all about our dads this month and exploring our father wound, looking at abandonment, grief, healing this part of us. I tend to do this, um, I did this last June as well, um, because I see, you know, a lot of, with clients, you know, exploring mum and dad is a really important part of our healing journey and part of us growing our self-worth. So we're doing that this whole month. And if you want to explore this deeper, then remember, I have the Rewrite Your Story membership, which supports the podcast. So if you have been binging the podcast for a while, this is a great step up to that. We'd have journaling prompts each week. Um, we have a community and we meet for a masterclass and a Q&A session and it's just thirty ninety nine. so it's a very low cost option. Um, as of June, that is just available to women um, just because of the safety of the group and what's being discussed. I felt like called to just make it that a female only group. But I do support men through my one-to-one work and through um, other things I have coming up. Um, And um, I've sort of changed this group slightly just to keep the purity of how lovely it is. And I will, you know, you can get on the yearly membership, but you have to be one of my previous clients or um, you've been in the membership as a monthly member for a little while. So check it out. I'm going to pop the um, details in the episode notes. And also I have a very exciting announcement to celebrate two years of Heart's Happiness because I launched my Heart's Happiness Instagram page on like the 6th of June, 2022, 2020, um, because I knew I was going to do my podcast and that was the start of me trying to advertise it and my story, etc. And it's been a whole two years and now I want to launch something else and it's called my, I don't know, Heart's Happiness Healing Hub. Um, So it's like a learning platform where you can purchase courses um, to help you on your journey to heal from your past, grow your self-worth, create your heart's happiness, like all of these things that I talk about. Um, So you'll have me in your pocket um, with lessons and worksheets. And um, so so they're going to be a combination of mini courses and programs. So As of next week, my Power of No mini course is going to launch and that the starting price on that is just £47. So you'll get videos and worksheets and you get to keep it. So basically, any time that you are struggling to say no or set a boundary, you can go in and do that course. And then, um, you know, the eight week program that I've been doing since I started um, that I bang on about all the time, which is my signature course, Finding Your Heart's Happiness, which is really all about creating a new foundation to help you with your building your self-worth. Because what I've noticed with my clients and with myself, that my story of trauma, intergenerational trauma, um, addiction in my family, the abuse that had happened, meant that I completely got robbed of my self-worth and self-esteem because it get, gets grown in those younger years. So I find that that is such a root wound for people. But this course is a great way to sort of understand your story and learn new tools to regulate and build that worth up. So I have always delivered that course live, but I've realized that I'm having more clients that are international now. So my timings are just not working for them so I've decided to deliver the lessons via my healing hub learning platform um so the next co- it will be launching on the 23rd of June and um you will be able to get drip fed a lesson each week and then you, you there's also payment plans I'm going to pop all the details in the episode notes um and then there will be a community to support that and I will be available via Q&A for that as well But I'll pop all the notes, everything in the episode notes, and you can come and join me because I really want us to 
really heal from this past story that we have, right? So I, if you haven't noticed with my podcast, etc., there was a long time that I spent really trapped in my victim. So this is when I was like, woe is me, you know, I've had this really bad life, you know, like I knew all these bad things that happened to me, you know, that, and like, you know, my dad's killed himself and I can't get a man and I'm so unhappy and like blah, blah, blah. Um, which, you know, I did for a long time, decades, decades did I feel sorry for myself. But what happened when I was in that phase of my life is I was so stuck like, and so miserable. Like, if I could put that in any kind of words, and you got, might be able to relate to that. And what I've discovered through, you know, I started all of this in, like, 2015, over the last seven years, is that by getting out of my way, moving out of that victim mentality that, oh, my God, this bad stuff has happened to me, I've really moved into my empowerment um, and really rewriting my story and creating a life I never thought I was worthy of. And I didn't think that was possible, but I absolutely know it is by taking small steps, right? And I had therapy and things like that, and they helped me so much. But what they didn't help me with was the tools and the techniques to grow my worth, to rewrite my story to create my own version of happiness, to move forwards, right? So my my life with my dad, and we're going to be talking about that today in terms of father wound, you know, it brought me a lot of pain, a lot of loss, a lot of heartache, a lot of trauma. Um, but by me stepping into that empowerment, moving out of that victim and really taking control of my own life and my own healing means that that I am at such peace with my story with my dad. I'm at such peace with the childhood that I've had. I'm okay with it, you know, and I never thought I was going to be. I kind of put my dad in a box to rot pretty much because he'd hurt me so much and I, I couldn't forgive him. But by moving through that, I have found such peace, you know, and um, I'm sure this is going to come up a lot during this month as we're talking about dad. So he's probably going to be mentioned a lot. But I never used to even think about him um, I, not because I didn't love him, but because I was just so hurt by things he had done and said, and, you know, the way he had died and, you know, all of these things, I was just so angry and hurt with him. And I kind of put it all in a box and I just wanted to just ignore it. But actually it was causing me a lot of pain ignoring it. And by opening my box, I have found this peace within me for him that, um, you know, for the first time in like, you know, I think it's going to be maybe like 15 years next year since he's died. And I've had a photo of him as a child in my office, but I've never had a photo of him in my house. And I had one printed for the wedding and I've actually put it in the hallway. And I talk to him every day now. And I have not done that the whole time he's died. So there is a real peace that's come. And this is a guy <laughs> that's caused me so much pain. But I can't tell you the freedom that has given me um, and yeah, it's just, it's it's very powerful when we take control of our stories. And that is why I created this podcast, to empower you guys. It's not for you to get stuck in that story of the past. It's for you to understand that story of your past. I want you to feel your feelings. I want you to grieve it. But I don't want you, well, I mean, it's your life. You can do whatever you like. You can stay in it. It's completely your right. And, you know, when bad things happen to us, like, you know, awful thing our parents can do awful things to us like it's up to us if we want to forgive and move through and heal that's everybody's choice like my dad chose not to heal from his dad and you know and I see how badly his life ended because of that but I chose to heal and to forgive and to pour light into those dark parts of my story because it sets me free from it and it allows me to be a parent myself. It allows me to do this work with you guys and it has been so life changing for me. So that is what this podcast is about. It's about empowering you, changing your story and not being victim to whatever you were as a child. And there is going to be so much more here to support you to get there. Um, I've had a, like this month has been, you know, May has been a pretty challenging month for me. I have had some big wake up calls about what I believe I'm here to serve. And I think that is something that's very important 
um, for me and it's a theme that I'm seeing with clients. So I'm really excited about the next couple of years and where we're going to go together. So if you're new to the podcast, do listen from the beginning. And if you've been loving it, I would love a little contribution to my baby, which is this business, um, through Patreon. Whatever you can afford. No amount is too big or too small. Right, so let's go on to daddy. Um, so um, the father wound. So I see, and this, by the way, this could relate to your mum as well. I know I've spoken about mothers separately um, on, in March earlier this year, but I find it could be either. And you might still have a father wound and you've not experienced as much trauma as, say, I did in my childhood, or you may have experienced way more than I have. Um, either way, a lot of us will have some kind of father wound. Um, and the depth of that and the damage of that is depending on that relationship with them. So um, so it can be because your father was actually absent from your life. Um, mine wasn't. He was in my life until he died, obviously. But emotionally distant or abusive, negative or overcritical dad can have long-term consequences for an individual. So if you are somebody listening to this and your dad was there and present, but he could be really critical of you or he was quite negative or maybe he was abusive to your mum or anything like that, then you have probably got some kind of father wound. And like I said, I think we all have one, but it might be deeper for, for you. And just notice that. Um, I like to just put my hand on my heart and go, okay, I've got a father wound that's all right I'm not gonna die because you know when we're young and we experience emotional wounding we feel like it's gonna kill us but we're just we're just together we're just shining some light on that that's all you may have noticed that by you know you you maybe haven't put this like oh it's because my dad did this I am like this like that's probably not coming to your consciousness but that's what we're trying to bring together now but if you can relate to that those kind of characteristics dad being a bit emotionally distant or abusive or critical or negative or maybe an alcoholic or have addiction because that makes our dad emotionally distant as well or have some kind of double life or he cheated on our moms or he left us or anything like that that can just make our dad you know unavailable to us and absent and because of that we can grow low self-esteem our self-esteem and our self-worth grows in the first seven years of our life um, based on you know how secure we feel, how safe we feel. So if we have got this emotionally absent dad, um, that will impact our feelings of safety and security. Okay, it's kind of annoying, but the father part of us is all about stability. I think like strength and groundedness. Like that's since I've come together with Simon, I feel like that is what I always longed for in my dad, but I I never really had that. And when we don't have that, it can really um, impact our self-esteem, especially if our dad was critical or we didn't feel like good enough for, for him or we didn't feel like he loved us. And that can really give us this low self-esteem. And low self-esteem could just spill out in so many areas of our lives. Like for me, because of that low self-esteem, I expected less off romantic relationships. I expected less in terms of jobs. I would do shitty jobs or I do work that I wasn't paid for and I would give a lot. And it was all of this low self-esteem, like trying to prove my worth constantly. Um, it can be, you know, you, you know, as low self-esteem, you may never push yourself at work, um, at school or work, or you may over try to achieve to try to feel good enough. Um, you may also have difficulty opening up and connecting with others because you just don't feel safe and and it can be a struggle with long lasting um, relationships and friendships. And I think for me, low self-esteem in my relationships, especially my friendships, was that I um, was afraid to show my true self. I felt like my true self uh, was not was not like nice or good enough. You know, like how deep and freaking weird I am and the stuff I talk about. I used to kind of keep that all in or try to um, and hide my pain and my sadness from other people and try not to show. And especially with men and romantic relationships. So it really can affect things. You can also have either really loose boundaries. So you just don't have boundaries. You don't know how to say no. 
you let people walk all over you. Um, like my dad was really overly critical and never seemed happy with what I was doing. And I just had this constant need to make him happy. Like degree, school, all of the things I was doing to make him happy. And it's funny because May being a big month for me, I was been exploring some of my stuff around money because it's coming up as I transition into a full-time business owner and there's so much that I did that he told me to do like I got a job because he wasn't happy with paying for things for me so I got a job um he wouldn't let me have access to that money and I would just do whatever he wanted like and then he wanted me to use that money that was in my account for a degree that I didn't want to do at a university I did not want to go to but I did all of these things happily to try to make him happy for his acceptance and for his approval. And I never said no to him. Um, and I noticed that that has bled out into my life, um, you know, since after him as well. And it's been something I've been working on so hard, which is why I've created the Power of No little mini course that's on that um, platform that's coming out next week. But I can also, you know, as part of this, have had really rigid boundaries. So therefore, if somebody crosses something or makes me feel upset, I could probably cut them off no problem in a plan to be safety. Like I kind of do that a little bit too much. Like it can be extreme um, and I am very aware of that, but sometimes it can feel so unsafe that I have no choice, but it is something that, you know, like I, I want to work on to be able to express that before I have to enforce a rigid boundary, if that makes sense. But that's the kind of thing we can really struggle around that boundaries element. Another place where our father wound could impact is just poor choices around romantic partners. So chasing after the unavailable man is a very common thing. Chasing after a man that you can fix. Chasing after men that are like your dad. Um, chasing after a man who has similar... Um, characteristics to him like if he was critical or overbearing or controlling or absent um you know we've we kind of fall into these patterns and I used to think that I had no choice in falling into these patterns because I was just attracted to these men um that maybe had similarities to my dad I thought I felt powerless to that but what I've discovered from my own journey is that we're not powerless to it actually at all and we're not, I've been saying this a lot to clients this week, you're not a broken bird, just because you've been attracted to maybe the addicts, maybe the adulterers, maybe the um, married men, or maybe the ones that need a lot of therapy, like, that's fine, um, and I put my hand up to all of those scenarios, those men were my crack, for sure, um, I tried, I wanted so badly to fix them, but that's because I was caught into this pattern of relationship dynamic that I had with my dad, where I was constantly trying to make save him. I was constantly trying to make him happy. I was constantly trying to prove to him that I was lovable and I was enough. And I was constantly rejected by him. And that's the pattern that I continued. And then I didn't. And the way I didn't was growing my self-worth, was learning how to regulate my system, was um, exploring these patterns and making new decisions which my eight-week course helps people to do because it gives you this awareness to break some of those cycles and start to bring new things in and because I changed myself on the inside I was able to attract something new in my life like you know um, my now husband is you know he has some similarities to my dad um, like you know he's He's a bit geeky and, you know, he loves computers. <laughs> he sounds so boring. He is really boring, just by the way. Um, and, um, but he doesn't shout. He's not critical. He's very calm. He's very grounded. He's not anxious. He's got all of these things that I really know that I needed in my life. And because I became aware of how these other men and their red flags were triggering me, because they were so much like my dad, I became conscious of it. And that, that conscious awareness made me able to make new choices. And it's very, very powerful. And if you are struggling with that, definitely come on that four week, eight week foundational course. We're going to go through all of the reasons why you are the way you are and how you can change that. And I also have an, another course coming out soon, which is around relationships. But 
you can fix this stuff basically but it's just being aware like i now look at myself and my behavior with love and compassion i'm like oh i'm noticing you're doing that because you know i'm growing into different areas of my life now and my self sabotage is coming up my limiting beliefs are coming up um my cra- like crashing triggering is coming out and i am just trying to look at that with compassion and be like okay well that's an issue from this point part of my life or whatever i'm not you know adding a load of meaning to it but it's going to be something i work on like it's okay like which we we are the reason why you've, we've been avoiding our father wound forever is because we think if we look at it it's going to kill us right we think that so like i did like i put everything in that box with my dad when he died pretty much you know, the love I had it with him, the special moments we did share, because yes, there was a lot of shit moments, but there was a lot of moments of pure love, and I'm sorry if I cry, but pure love where he held my hand and told me he loved me, and there wasn't many of them, okay, there wasn't, maybe like a handful, but I know without a doubt, now I know that he did love me, and that all that other stuff that he did to me was because of his own pain and his own trauma. But before I looked at the box and saw how that behavior made me feel, I was unaware to it. So therefore, I was going around chasing a version of him. So that's like the important thing to realize is that when we keep our traumas in this box, in this dark place, we're not telling anyone, we don't want to look at it. You know, you're like, maybe you're like terrified of doing my courses because you're like, oh God, I don't, I don't want to go there. The thing is, is it can start to infect your life in different ways. Um, you know, even with your children and stuff like that, like if you're not opening the box, then maybe you're replicating some of their behavior to your own family. And you won't know until you look at that box and you feel those feelings and you shed light in there and you learn new ways of being. Because that's how you help the past to heal as well, like, you know, your de- your family. Um, the other thing that can happen when you've experienced a father wound is the cycle of abuse. So basically, you either can become an abuser yourself. Um, to So you become an abuser to feel safe. Um, and... Um, or you become somebody that is abused. So you become maybe a walkover, a doormat. Um, and that is certainly what I did. So, and also it's harder to become a good parent yourself because you don't have a model for healthy, right? So you have to go and find out. And that's what I'm all about in my world and my courses in this podcast is what is healthy? Like, I remember when I was with Simon and he, there's no drama there. There's no chasing him. There's no um, unavailability. You know, I was like, is this like, are we in love with each other? Because this seems boring. Because my whole life I've been chasing the high of like getting that love. But that was actually just me in a, in a, in a cycle of abuse. And now I'm not in that. And it's very calm and relaxing that actually my insides are healing as a result of it. Um, so, you know, like I said, without looking at the box, you don't know about if you're repeating the same mistakes as your, as your parents, as your dad, as your mum. Um, and that's why addressing your father wound is so critical, not just for you, not for your other half, but also for your own children. And that's the other thing, you know, we may, um, be like, obviously I'm a woman, but sometimes I can go into him you know, I've noticed when I'm really tired and exhausted, not taking care of myself, I can kind of go into his really critical, harsh, and I can be not very nice, basically, because I am that exhausted. But it's that I'm that dysregulated. I've gone into my fight mode, which goes into a little bit of him. And I'm very like, I'm a subtle version. I do look a bit like him as well. So um, a little bit. But I can lose my shit and then, you know, and I, and I am aware of that. Uh, it doesn't happen very much, but I can imagine as I grow my family and have small children that that could be a thing. <laughs> so it's something that I need to become aware of. Again, with love and compassion and um, being aware of that. And just knowing that when we're doing those things, when we're going back into that pattern, it's because of our own 
emotional dysregulation we need to take care of ourselves when i'm starting to be a bit of a, a you know not very nice i'm like i need to go and take care of myself so hopefully some of this is resonating with you and it it sounds like your story and you know or not but or some of it does but you know some of the things that could have happened in your childhood was that he was frequently absent and we've got a great podcast coming up with um Charisse who's going to be sharing her own story of an absent dad and um like emotional unavailability and you know like for her her dad wasn't present whereas my dad was present but our issues are the same are very very similar so it's an interesting story to listen to um you know your dad was abusive or emotionally absent so like my dad never hit me but he was incredibly critical there was the threat of the hit and also he was emotionally absent because he was so traumatized by his own stuff that's how I would describe my dad it's not because he didn't love me or want the best for me but he was so preoccupied with his pain so he was like he was terrified of not having money when he had money like that was something that consumed him he was um anxious about work and teaching but you know and these kind of things and not feeling good enough and and he used alcohol to medicate so often he was really like tired in the mornings when we were like young and we wanted to play with him he didn't really he wasn't really on his best form but when my dad was on his best form he was so much fun and it's a real shame because that's who he truly was. But the trauma made him very absent. And he was so critical. It's unbelievable. Um, I still hear his voice in my head sometimes. Um, I mean, <laughs> when I first gave up my job, I was like, God, my dad wouldn't be happy that I gave up my job in IT. Um, because that, you know, you kind of know, like, when they would disapprove of your actions, your cho- choices and your behaviours. But learning about intergenerational trauma and healing that father wound means that um i now know that i have noticed that oh, this could be something that would disappoint him but then i sort of give myself love and compassion that i'm not here to live a life to please him but i'm, I'm here to live a full life and um and that's important to me um also you know you could have a, a father wound if you if your dad was physically abusive or also if you were like controlled and withhold love or a, you know anything essential as a form of punishment um i've heard lots of stories like that like where you know clients have not been able to eat or something if they broke the rules or anything like that like again a controlling dad that's definitely screams trauma from his childhood and by controlling you he feels like he's keeping you safe and himself safe um another thing um this came up with another client that my dad really got weird with me as I transitioned into more of a woman. So when I was a child, he could sort of handle me okay. But when I started to go into puberty and grow boobs and um, stuff like that, he got a bit weird. Like when I say weird, like got scared maybe. I think he might've been scared of what could happen and and therefore he got more controlling with me. And um, so that might be something that you may have noticed. And that really like made me feel like he didn't trust me. It made me feel like I couldn't make good decisions. And you know what? That's what exactly what happened. Um, so how to heal from the father wound? I have found therapy massively helpful with this, like to have a space where you could just talk. And um, I did somatic therapy. So that's very much going through a childhood memory a moment and noticing how it it feels in the body to help the body to release the trauma that's i cannot recommend that enough therapy with uh, body work is really really powerful and you may you know go through situations um and look at them and it's really hard and it's really sad and when you know when i was going through that i felt a deep sadness and a deep grief and 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 you know that was a that's been a process for a long time and then I guess other ways that I've been healing my wound is the coaching as well. Like, a, you know, I've had a lot of coaching myself. I've really um, gone into my whole relationship behavior. And that's been really healing from my father wound. Being in a relationship with Simon has been really healing from my father wound. Um, and like I even met, you know, I've met Simon's dad recently just before we got married. I hadn't met him before that because they'd been out of touch. And he was just such a 
lovely man. Like, he's so kind and calm. And I'm not to say he's not perfect, but, like, I felt a bit sad that my dad wasn't like that, <laughs> you know? I did a little bit, but I was a bit like, oh, I, you know, if I have more time with this person, that's nice. And it can help me to heal that father wound as well. So sometimes, you know, finding other people that can give you... um sort of that same that connection can be quite nice to, as you move forward um support groups are great as well um like i said in my rewrite story membership we're going to be exploring dads in a bit more detail um just to take layers off of it really um like i think you know for me like since i've been doing this work i've been taking layers off this each year in some way and this this year with me getting engaged and getting married and my life moving on I found it very emotional because like I was just really sad that he couldn't be part of these moments because no matter what I say or no matter what bad stuff has happened I loved and adored my dad you know and I wished it could be different and I wished he could be here or she could be different too but you know and I um I made a real effort to bring him into my wedding to bring him into that moment to bring the good things you know there was a handful but there was a handful of good things and I'm really lucky that I have that and some people don't even have that so the handful of good things I brought into my wedding like uh, my dad had really different type of music tastes um he wasn't into like you know like asian men like him were normally into indian music but he wasn't like that at all he looked like into bob dylan and bruce springsteen and all these different other people so i had like his music throughout the wedding i cut my cake to song that um a concert that i went to with my dad with my dad took me to see van morrison when i was young so we went to, uh, I put that as our cake cutting song. Um, I played Elvis for our wedding dance. It was actually Simon's suggestion, but it really reminds me of him. Um, so I had kind of that theme around all the time. And I had um, like a memory table with like lots of people that we'd lost. And, and I also did a speech. I didn't know if I could do it. It was very, very short, but it was, and I, and I will tell you guys this because it was healing for me to say the words that, you know, my dad wasn't perfect, but he was the only dad I ever had. And um, I loved him. And I choose to see the light that he had in him and I forgive him. And I, you know, sort of the way I'm keeping, the way I'm healing my father wound is connecting to that light within him. And that's really helping me, um, you know, and, I did a meditation not long before the wedding and where he came to me in a meditation and he was lovely and full of light in this meditation and full of love and it's that part of him that I choose to move forward with my life with. I'm ready to let go of the traumatised part of him. Um, of course I will share that with you all but he's not the dad that I'm keeping with me anymore. So I've opened that box, I've thrown away all of the crap in there that I got from him that he gave to me and um, so I've just kind of cleared that all out and now I've got a handful of memories and moments where I felt loved by him to my core you know it maybe it was more in my younger years you know maybe but that's fine and that brings me such peace. So for me, that's been a really powerful part of my father wound journey. But I did have to get angry about it. I had to go boxing and punch a bag about him. I had to write in my journal a lot about him. I had to go to community groups and talk about him for me to get there. Like this is years of work on my part to sort of clear that out. But the thing was as well, if without working on my father wound, I wasn't able to transition into healthier relationships. So if you are somebody that's struggling with that, then that screams that kind of father wound um, element that is getting to you. And that there's so much that you can do to sort of let it go. Like, you know, I will just tap sometimes, even though my dad told me that I wasn't good enough and tap through my body. Even though my dad told me that, 
there is no way you can earn money from being your own, having your own business. Tap in on that. Even though my dad told me that I wouldn't amount to anything, that I was stupid, that I was ugly. You know, just tapping through those things. Because I know lots of people that listen have had critical parents. But, and just being like, I let go. It's another one I like, tapping through. I let go of the words that my dad said to me. I let go of the words that he said to me. They were not the truth. They were a symptom of his pain. (sighs) And just breathing out on that. You know, it's like all of these things, you know, we're so lucky. There's so many people out there that can help us with this as well. But there's so many little things we can do ourselves to make our peace with it. So that we don't expect anything from our dad. And that whatever he does manage to bring to you, you're okay with just, you know, it's not like, you know, like, you know, like, oh my God, I've got to take my dad's crumb because that's all he gives me. But it's different. It's like a shift over to being like, oh, check him out giving out crumbs. Poor guy. He can't show love. I mean, that's if you want to have a relationship with him, uh, unless you want to cut him off, which is completely your decision. And that's the other thing, as part of your father wound journey, and if your father's still alive, you may realise that actually to heal my father wound, I actually need to have space from him. He needs to not be in my life. Uh, or that I forgive him and I let it go, but I, he he's so toxic and so traumatised that I can't have him anywhere near me or my children. And that's that's such a massive act of self-love. And that's, again, a part of the healing the father wound. Because when you've opened up that box, you've realised the right decisions for you to move forward and to be who, you know, to, to be healthy, basically. So, like, for me, the act that I had to do was let go of the words and the, the darkness and everything. Like, I had to kind of let that go um, and release it into the light like I had to kind of do that because um part of you know me not going there with him meant that there was a lot of grief in my heart still I think there was a lot of pain there still like on there about you know how much I miss him because I do and it's confusing (laughs) because he really was a pain in the ass but I do miss him and that's weird right you know my logically my brain's like why do you miss him because what do you get from him because that's what love's like it's very confusing so um but all of that I found by exploring that father wound and if you want help exploring yours like I said we're doing the 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 journaling prompts and the masterclass this month on rewrite your story membership if you are a lady that's been struggling with her dad um and also the eight week course goes through like mum and dad and we kind of start this foundation of awareness to start you to realize why you have got into the patterns that you have and then you know I have lots of resources and ways to help you to move through it um because you know you deserve to be happy you deserve to heal you deserve to find your happiness and the reason why you maybe you're not could be because of this father wound making you feel like you're not worth it or you're not good enough or that you can't get that because he told you that you never would I mean lots of um female clients I have as well um you know their dads pretty much told them they're not going to be anything but mother and wife and you know and I don't know if that's why my dad got so weird with me as I became quite through puberty because like you know we've been given this really low impression of women and they have that too so it's interesting right but I would love to know um, about your father in. So if you ever want to like drop me a message on Instagram and tell me if this helped you or if there's an area of this that you would like more information. I'm planning content well in advance now so I can always put something in on the schedule. So thank you so much for joining me and I will speak to you very soon. And there we have it guys, an episode completed. I hope you enjoyed it and it raised a load of awareness in your mind. There was alarm bells going. You were all like, ding, that's totally me because that's what I was like when I started this journey. And that is the start of the process, finding out this information and realizing it has happened in your own life. So I really hope it was helpful. And before the next episode coming out next Wednesday, be sure to check us out on Instagram. So it's hearts underscore underscore happiness. Also, we have a YouTube channel where I share the videos I create for Instagram on. So you can check that out. They come on about once a week. 
And then we also have a Facebook group if you want to join to carry on the conversation. I want to create a community where we're all talking about our very real experiences and traumas. And then there is also my website called heartshappiness.co.uk, which you can check out to join our mailing list so that as I create new services and support tools for you all, you're the first to find out. And I have a freebie on there, so definitely check that out. It's five books that transformed my healing. So if you really want to kickstart and you know you're liking the content in here, these books are like the basis of so much of my knowledge. So definitely check that out. And I will speak to you next week. I'm so excited to continue this journey with you to help you to find your own heart's happiness. Take care.